Yo, what's good everybody? It's your boy the Kryptonian saying bringing you a review for One Piece chapter 114. Yo, this was a setup chapter, but this was a really, really hot setup chapter, man. And the reason why I'm saying it, you know, Miss All Sunday really gets my attention. It's not so much because of the devil fruit. It's because I can't tell if she's a troll or if there's something with her, you know, like something else. And this is what I mean when I say your characters need to live in the gray. You know, up until this point, the bad guys that we've seen, they've been bad guys. Well, I mean, just for this arc, like bad guys, are just bad guys. And right here we have a character. We can't tell if she's good. We can't tell if she's bad. She lives in the gray area. And just from a different perspective, let you guys know something like a lot of writers, they struggle with this. You know, lesser writers, it's very easy to fall into a trap of just making your characters fall for this idealistic thing. And that's why they're doing it. And they're just so hell-bent on going on their path. And even though they're the villain, they could be flat. And with this, we don't know what this, what's driving Miss All Sunday. And she's in the gray area. We can't tell if she's good. We can't tell if she's bad. And to be able to develop a complex character like that, who is doing things while at the same time you're not sure what the end game is it's very key and it's a sign of good writing and to kind of veer it a little further off point you know it's why i very much like itachi from naruto because before itachi's backstory was uh, introduced every time itachi showed up we didn't know what itachi was like we didn't know if he was good we didn't know if he was bad we knew clearly he wasn't good but he couldn't have been just that bad, especially when the flashback with Sasuke when him and Naruto are fighting because we see a different side of him. And it's the same thing here with Miss All Sunday. We don't know what her end game is. And when uh, Miss Vivi, or Princess Vivi even says that she's breaking the fourth wall saying what's her end game. And that's really us as readers asking that. And I just love how Oda slipped that in there because he's progressing the plot forward while making it look effortlessly. And a lot of the times writers will introduce a new character like that because they've hit a rough patch. They don't know how to connect things. And that's all. That's like a fail safe. If you don't know where to go, introduce a new character because that new character can add a new perspective on the story. So I like how that was done. Now, what I want to do, I want to get further into uh, Miss All Sunday's interactions. Now, <clears throat> what I want to do on that is I want to ask you guys right now, what did you think that her end game was going to be? You know, like what were your thoughts when you saw her? Were you just as thrown off as I was and felt like, felt like you were Usopp being grabbed by the nose by Luffy and trying to catch up? And the reason why I use that example is the chapter opens up with Luffy grabbing Sanji by the nose and Usopp by the, I mean Sanji by the leg and Usopp by the nose and just dragging them along and neither one of them are able to kind of get an idea of what, for what's going on. <clears throat> and at this point everyone's in scramble mode. And a lot of times when you introduce a new character like that, your reader's in scramble mode because they're trying to connect that character with what they already know about the story. So that's, I mean, this is very good from a, a craft perspective. This is probably the best chapter in the series because the reader engagement level, if you found yourself falling into a uh, cruise control where you're just kind of reading it and taking it as it's going, now you're having to work. Now your interest has been peaked a little more. So I really like that. Now, the thing, the other reason why I miss All Sunday really peaks me is now it's because of her devil fruit because I don't know what her devil fruit power is. It looks like she's able to either manifest things out of thin air or if it's something similar to Madara's limbo where if you look, this is why you'll see why I'm using Madara's limbo as an example because it almost seems like there's an invisible version of herself that is making these things move around. And what, I mean, what I'm saying by these things, like you see right here you see Sanji with the gun you see Usopp with the uh shit I cannot think of the the, the slingshot 
And she says, don't point those things at me. It's dangerous. And she doesn't even do anything. And yet these dudes are falling over. It almost looks like something just snuck up behind them and hit them. So that's what I mean. I don't know what's going on. There's this one scene where she snaps her fingers and Luffy's hat comes up. And now we get the pirate crew's name, the Straw Hat Pirates. That's pretty cool. And symbolic Luffy Straw Hat. I like that. But and uh, my boy Unexpected Wonder did say that, you know, the Straw Hat Luffy. And I always wondered what the fuck that meant, you know. So now I've got it. And I didn't look it up because I was worried about maybe coming across spoilers. So I, I, I really like that. Now. The other thing, though, is her design. The way that she kind of comes in, if you look at her, this is after she realizes that, you know, uh, Miss uh, Monday was a decoy. We don't see her face, and yet right here, I got my hopes up because the design, as far as for a woman, she looks different than all the other One Piece women. And then later on, she automatically falls into the same thing with Oda. I know you guys have said that Oda has a problem drawing women and that, you know, he finds it troublesome. So right here or difficult. So right here, I was really excited. And then you see the design, very hot design right there, a little seductive looking. And then right here, when she, we finally see her face, like I said, because it's blacked out, when we see her face, he's revealing it little by little. Part of her face is still shaded in. You don't really see it. And if you look at it, you see the right eye, you see the left eye on Miss Wednesday. And it's because of two sides of the same coin. They're in the same organization. So I really like seeing that and just the way the panels are kind of introduced next to each other. And she's kind of on her eyes and shit. And that, you know, she knew everything was going on. She allowed it to happen. And then, but I want to just do the progression to the faces before I get further into that. Because right here, she just looks like every other woman in one piece. But I just like how Oda just gradually revealed her face. So I really like that. That was that was a nice little switch up. And again, like I pointed out in the Sir Village arc, if you pay attention to how these panels are set up, you can really catch some of the stuff that's getting ready to come. So I'm not sure what Oda's endgame on this is, but I really want to see more interaction with Miss All Sunday and uh, with Princess Vivi. But the thing is, is basically Miss All Sunday allowed Princess Vivi to gather an information. She dropped the breadcrumbs because she just thought it was interesting. That's why I used the Aizen thing because Aizen was just like, Ichigo, I planned your whole life all the way up until now. You know, it's like kind of like that uh, Jerry, fuck the Jim Carrey movie, uh, Ed Almighty or whatever, fuck Bruce Almighty. Or, no, The Truman Show, shit. So many of them damn movies are like the same fucking thing. But The Truman Show, where the whole life was choreographed. Princess Vivi's whole mission was choreographed. So right there, I really liked that. Got my interest. But at the same time, I felt like I've seen this before. So that was a little bit of a downpour. But at the same time, the characters living in the gray areas, I kind of gave it a pass. So it didn't really bother me as much. But apparently... <clears throat> The island that Luffy has unknowingly sent them towards is going to be a very dangerous island. And the reason I say Luffy unknowingly sends them towards it is the log that she gives them would have given them a clear path towards the island that's one step or one stop in front of Princess Vivi's homeland. And Luffy's like, fuck that shit. I'm the captain. I didn't say we're going this way. And I just like how Luffy, again, if he's going to screw up, he's going to screw up all the way. He just sticks to it. And that's one thing with Luffy that I like. But at the same time, I'm looking at this. And I want to start seeing some growth at this point. Because I'm 100 something chapters in. And I'm seeing a little bit of growth. Because he's understanding that shit's getting real. And I don't know, maybe that's just his, his character flaw. Is he wants to do things his way all the way through. If that's the case then I could definitely see it as justified or it's becoming justified. But at the same time, I'm ready to see some growth, dude, because when you're in a position like that, you have a lot of people's lives in your hands. So I'm going to wrap the chapter up right there. My chapter question for you guys is what were your thoughts on Miss All Sunday when she was introduced? And tell me which version did you like more, the anime version or the manga version. But that's it for this review. If you liked anything I had to say, as always, comment, rate, subscribe, share. I greatly appreciate it. That's it. Thanks for watching Kryptonian Saying.